Welcome to this Q&A session for the film The Cave, which is part of the 31st edition of Nordisk Panorama Film Festival. This film is not only nominated for Best Nordic Documentary, it also has the chance to win the Audience Award, so don't forget to vote online after this session. My name is Elin Kamlet and I will be the host of this Q&A and I have the great pleasure of talking with Firas Fayad, who is the director and co-writer of the film The Cave. Hello Firas, welcome. Thank you, Elena, for this. Um, thank you, Elena, for this um, introduction and thank you for Nordic Panorama to, uh, to select the film. And thank you for everyone who's watching and going to watch this film. No, thank you and thank you for the film and sharing it with us. I, my first question is uh, connected to your previous film. We know your work already from um, Last Men in Aleppo, your previous documentary about the white helmets in Aleppo. Can you tell us just what made you want to go back after Last Men in Aleppo and film this story as well? Yeah, um, uh, actually in, in the beginning of, of, of um, the revolution in Syria, I, I start to document it, um, the civil uh, demonstrations in Syria. Um, that uh, seeking for change and democracy. I wasn't planning for, um, I don't have any plan like to those film in, in something, uh, but I was wanna tell stories about what um, the people feel, how we feel like through a years and years from dictatorship. Um, then um, the doctor was involved from the beginning of the revolution to saving lives of the people who has been shot in the street by the government, by the government forces and the, the brutal policing that used against the, uh, the public. Um, and, I was, and I was inside the prison in my experience, I witnessed the screaming of women inside because they're women's a torture because they are women, but also I've been hearing the torture, uh, like some um, nurses was like our doctors, um, as a, I remember that was shouting also like uh, 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 under torture and that I didn't see them in my eyes, but I hear them in this way. Of course, like it was hard for me as a, as in, 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 in those uh, dictatorship places, the dictatorship uh, um, um, uh, jails, like to, uh, to see everything because if, if in my eyes it's covered uh, and um, um, the prisoner hold hold in 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 very inhuman circumstances. Um, uh, so the experience inside the the, the 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 chamber torture we call them chamber torture. Um, and outside of the when I've been released and get out of sight, that bring me like I have to tell this stories more. Um, and then they came last minute one in the cave. It's like a kind of uh, continuities for uh, the feeling that I want to bring the stories of the people who is um, uh, like bravery uh, facing the increasingly circumstances that happened around us. And, uh, and that what happened with the, with the cave, that it came naturally as a continue for last minute and the last minute will also continue for the cave, even the last minute will start in the beginning, but this is um, uh, the human effort like to, to change the life of the people who stays in Syria. That was my, my, the, the thought of uh, the thought that in my mind, how you can change, how you can be in the front line as a civilians uh, to do and save lives. Uh, uh, far away from the weapons, from away from the battle, from the way from the conflict, as a civilian, so what the tools that you have and you can save your life—that the idea of of that came into my, uh, to my mind. It was like interesting idea that to to process it through the story. Yes, and did you know from the beginning that you wanted your film to focus on Dr. Amani and to have her as a main character, or how did it develop from when you started filming and then until you stopped filming, so to say? How did you? plan the story of the film? No, the, um, there was many motivation in my mind. I want to tell the stories about the women. I want to tell the stories about the hospital under attack from Russian and the Syrian regime um, because the hospital and the um, um, uh, medical facilities was all the time under target. The target. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to tell those two things together. I've, I've been, I've been, I, 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 uh, during the filming of Last Minute Lipo, um, um, I've been, I have, I have access like to visit those hospitals. And in the beginning of the revolution, there was like something called like a medical point where they give emergency 
uh, support for the victims of the uh, the victims of the bomb or the shooting, and then those hospital turned to be um, uh, undercover, like uh, they start to build it uh, like um, under building or underground or in in the mountains, like to to protect it because it was like targeted by by warplanes, targeted by the by, by, by bomb, mm -hmm. um, and the, I was I was I see the woman that working there, and the, their work is not just about saving lives, also their work that established kind of environment of of about the women rights and the equality mm -hmm. and the justice something it's beautiful strongly that established in this environment it's not turned to just to be a hospital it's turned to be a place uh, uh, for life a place for for meaning for the for 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 the effort of the women there and I feel it like it's it's the same call that we call it as a young people when we went to the street uh, and start to, sh uh, to, 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 to call for democracy, equality, and change the law uh, to respect the human dignity. That was the, 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 the idea. Then, then later, when they start filming the film, in the middle of, 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 of the filming, after one year, we, I, uh, I feel Dr. Amani was the main, the a unique subject, unique character, unique, unique, unique personal, have a unique personality. She's the, the only woman that lead an hospital in such a situation. She has a lot of things like to, uh, she fighting for, she, and that I feel that she's, she can be the main character, but we, we wasn't have any guarantees because we don't know what's gonna happen in her future, what's gonna, gonna happen in this hospital, what's gonna happen in this city, because if, uh, because we, we have to take care of the, her security, um, uh, the security of the hospital, and all of this is information that very dangerous if they come to the public mm. uh, in this part. It's developed, it, but it's developed in very dangerous and sensitive way, like to end in telling this story. Yes, and I would like to ask you a little bit more about, ask if you can tell us more about that, the, the safety, because it's, as you say, it's obviously a very dangerous situation to just uh, be in, and of course also to film in, because you are, uh, you have been collecting evidence of, uh, of, of war crimes, right? So how, how did you work around and, and manage safety for yourself and, and for your crew? How did you plan and try to keep it as safe as possible? Um, I, um, my crew was filming in that area because they are living in that area where, where we filmed. We've been two teams. One team was in northern. I mean, geographically, it's hard like to explain because of the the, the audience maybe don't have an, an idea of the geographic in Syria. But we filmed in two different areas in, in Syria. One, uh, I have a team and was connecting with them uh, from distant, and uh, I with another team I was filming in, in different areas. Um, and of course, the dangers of every area is different. As the circumstances is different, uh, and the, 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 what we do, it's also dangerous. So we was trying to keep the story undercover, and there's no a lot of information to publish about it, and try like to keep it between us. And a lot of people was don't know about this, and they surprised the film has come out with this way because, you know, the 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 dangerous things that not us as a team. The, that, the risk that we, fit, we have to face, me or my team, was the cinematographer close from that. But the risk is that the, 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 the risk is like surrounding the doctors because they was target for the bomb and the kidnapping or the pressure, the political pressure on all the time. Also for the hospitals because the hospital have to take care of the civilians and their information and their safety and the area was sieged and there was all around around this area was a lot of political pressure and Russia was pressuring strongly to destroy those hospitals because this is the only hope for the civilians to stay alive and continue and survive in this mm -hmm. way so we have all the time to to use like kind of um Covering the uh, covering the materials and sending with a uh, with a password cyber low uh, low 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 um, uh, low qualities um, and it, this is was costing so much also like in in, in uh, from resources like to mm -hmm. deal with uh, in this way but sometimes it's like a miracle to do this film like when I think about it again and reread it we read how we film this is a film how we managed like to to keep the story in track 
um, uh, it's really like a, a, a miracle how I managed to, to do it uh, uh, in this way. But this is will never happen if we didn't have the access from Dr. Amanish that mm. give us and support support us like to film with her and film with the other women inside the uh, uh, female doctors and uh, nurses and the volunteers, uh, medical volunteers, but also my team who take um, a lot of uh, responsibility on them. So I really appreciate them for all of, of effort that they share with me in this um, uh, to manage to tell this story. Mm, of course. And speaking of, uh, <laughs> you underline the safety of, of the doctors and the medical workers. How is, uh, how is Dr. Amani today? What is her life like today? Can you tell us something about where she is and how she is doing? Uh, Dr. Amani now in Germany. Um, she traveled to Europe. And, um, she, she got married and uh, um, she now um, uh, like living in and and trying like to to continue her life as a norm as she can mm. in, in this situation. Uh, she have a plan for like supporting women in a role of leading and uh, in medical society, um, and that was her all goal uh, and the future goal in in. in and this is why uh, Dr. Ala, she's still working in Syria. Um, uh, Dr. Salim also is in Germany. Uh, mm. Also like um, try also like to support the medical uh, team inside Syria and in different level. That, uh, that, that so we are separated all over the world. And, and generally that my team, my cinematographer also like outside of Syria, because it's not easy to stay after you film this is film what we films is evidence it's clear evidence for crime against the humanity and all the time we're facing so much political pressure mm. and uh, attack for our credibility and our personality because we we in in a level we bring something nobody want to see and nobody want like from the from the political from the the country that involving in the war in syria in general like to show that this is a crime. It's still ongoing from uh, nine years, and there's nothing happening in in this way. So we, the most dangerous thing that we documented is the direct attack from the Russian warplane to the hospital, and the using of the chemical weapons. Mm. And that not easy uh, to keep those information and not uh, left any kind of uh, um, um, an anger from the country that uh, like Russia or or the Syrian regime, like how we get managed to get this information out in this way. But this mm. is the work of the cinema in general, like to tell the stories, to show the world what, where we, where they can take a step further, um, uh, um, further, like to use those, those evidence as a, um, as a, as a way, like to change the, the, the current reality. Mm. And is that something that, that uh, motivates you to keep going? Because I, I'm, what strikes me when I'm watching the film is in the most like desperate and heartbreaking moments, I feel like I don't know how you could manage emotionally and spiritually to continue, you know, to, to keep filming and keep working. And it's because it's, it's quite a desperate situation. How, how, do you, how do you do that? How do you keep going? Well, um, no, it's not, um, I'm, 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 to be honest on this point, uh, it's not easy for a freelancer filmmaker, not impolite and, you know, working alone and all the time, like moving from company to company to do my film. It's not easy things. Uh, uh, and not easy for any team, like, to participate in such hard films. Uh, of course, it's those films left me with a strong effect on my life. Um, um, uh, and I can't uh, separate myself from them. Uh, but at the same time, I feel in all the time I'm in a, in, in, a, in a responsibility of fight for the story that I'm telling in, on these things. The, th the thing that I try in Last Miracle in the Cave that I'm not trying to tell journalistic films. All the time I try to, to find the balance between the evidence that we documented as a evidence uh, that has a, like a, a low low perspective or uh, 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 and uh, um, and the cinematic perspective mm. in a way. because in the end I'm not a lawyer I'm not social 
um, activist or not like I'm, I'm, I'm um, our activist. I'm a, I'm a filmmaker and this is my position. I'm not <laughs> changing my position or taking another position and I can't put myself in activism position. So I try like a filmmaker who loves cinema. That that also my perspective that way. I want to tell these stories with a, with a way that handling the cinema. And I think the cinema itself, it helped me like to feel that my position as a cinema uh, lover or, uh, or, uh, uh, or like a storyteller that make me feel all the time kind of a peaceful with myself, that, that, that position. And the result that I gain and I, I, that, that the film achieve in the end, the change that make for the subject, um, the attention that bring for my country, for the people that I film, that's, that's important things in this way. And all the time I try to tell these stories, not only me, of course, there's a lot of people helping me to bring these stories in the end, but in the end, the filmmaker has, has uh, end in, in a personal uh, battle because he's the responsible, the only responsible about the, the only person who's uh, uh, the, the context connect with, uh, with, with, with us as a filmmaker in, in a way. Um, so that, that help when we see that the film changed something mm -hmm. or changed point of view or people talk about it, negotiate about it or make some conversation, general, bigger conversation that we feel like, yes, that, that the film uh, make you feel you want to continue, what do you do? Mm, good. And it is gaining a lot of attention. Um, congratulations also to your Emmy nominations for the film. <laughs> Great to see all the attention the film is getting. Um, it, it's, it's weird in this way, like, to make a film, hard film, and leave through this as details. The thing that the film that we do, it's a film about our ongoing pain, that mm. we are personally affected. We don't like to think that I'm not searching about in the film, I'm not searching about personal connection to find, like I have to tell the story through personal connection. The film itself is our life, that, mm. that the way. Mm. So, uh, and that will, affect us, the people that are dying in front of us. In, in this footage, it's our people, mm. our people of our country. Just imagine your neighbor, those, your neighbor or those people that uh, uh, um, um, you know them, that, 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 that effect in this way. So you coming to the moment where this film gain a lot of attention on the cinematic level, like a mm. war or mm. nomination or whatever, you, I feel in a paradox. I can't find the balance. How I can? I should be happy here, or I, what I should do? Mm -hmm. so all the time, I have this is inner struggle with the way to how I can react in this way. That mm -hmm. sometimes make a, 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 to be honest, sometimes to make a conflict between me and my team that who doesn't understand what the problem, why I'm not happy mm -hmm. <laughs> in this way because it's hard. It's mm -hmm. really, really hard, like to understand the, uh, the feel, the, what kind of feeling I should stand in. Should I be happy or should I be sad uh, in this way? Um, so it's paradox film. No, I understand. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what, one of the very heartbreaking things for me in the film is one of the scenes where uh, Dr. Amani and her colleagues kind of are struggling to, they're struggling to try to provide help and in how limited they are. They, they cannot give the, the malnourished, malnourished children uh, the medicine that they need, not all of them. Um, and which makes me wonder in this time we live in now, uh, I mean, your film first came out in, in 2019, right, in last year. So now in the global pandemic that we have now, what is the situation like in the hospitals in Syria? And what, what can we as an audience now, having witnessed this through your film, do in some capacity to help, if anything? Um, uh, the situation is really very bad. It's uh, difficult. I wish, like Dr. Amani here, to, to to tell more about this. Um, but as a um, as a Syrian who knows the situation in Syria, the hospital does can't handle all. Uh, the, 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 there is very limited resources for the hospital in Syria, and they can't handle this situation, especially in the areas that still suffering from the war, like from the conflict in this way. Um, and the, the number of the doctors is very little uh, in the way um, that working there or uh, operate the hospitals. Um, but generally, they are really a real hero in this way, like who, who managed to stay and going like they have to face the war, gen the genocide, uh, 
and they have to also uh, um, inform the people and dealing with the like the pandemic, uh, the COVID nineteen effect, and different different also disease that coming as um as a result of the uh, the conflict you know like it's not just a, one level from a level from that you know we are when we talk um, a lot of people when they talk about stay home or wash your hand the people doesn't have the access for water they shouldn't have access for the soup or like the 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 resources that make them clean and doesn't have houses because their houses destroyed so living in camp so the those camps can uh, it's not prepared really for uh, handling such a uh, uh, yeah. um, such a situation like COVID nineteen? It's like the people like those camps dealing with a with a like a, a victim of the war and people running from the where they are bombing and in, in the in, in a refugee camp that on the Turkish Syrian border and this way, but they not preparing for this such a. Uh, such a crisis in in this way, but uh, people try like a lot of volunteers try working hard like to try to to uh, to, uh, to educate the people there and um, giving them information about that, including the white helmet. They turn change their works also for, to uh, improve their work like to cleaning uh, um, to cleaning the areas and. Uh, uh, giving information about uh, the COVID-19 and the doctors the same, they start have like more works, harder works in, mm. um, in this way. The situation is not good in the end, uh, but the people working with the very limited resources. And is there, finally, I'm sorry, we're already running out of time. This, this is very brief, but do you have any final comment to the question? Any final comment or something you would like to add to this that hasn't already been said? For example, can... or Dr. Armani or something else? Yes. Yeah, Dr. Amani, she established a fund called Al Amal Fund uh, to support the women still working in the medical uh, uh, field and uh, in a leader role and to, uh, to educate uh, like uh, young leaders like uh, in early age, uh, and that will help the future of Syria. Of course, the the fund called Al Amal, the hope, and the people can find it uh, in a in a link in. Uh, in the way of the search about it. They just they have to write Al Amal or the Hope Fund, Dr. Aman, uh, and then they will find it on, uh, on the research. So they can donate and they can send a support letter, anything that could help this is fun to keep running. Perfect, very good. That is something we can do after watching this. So uh, thank you very much for participating in this Q&A for us and thank you to the audience for watching. And remember, there are many other interesting films to watch and don't forget to cast your vote for the Audience Award. Thank you, thank you I really appreciate it.